Next up to the stage, I want to welcome, uh, straight out of Cleveland, the winner of the uh, first and the only Youngstown Comedy Festival. Um, uh, one of Northeast Ohio's most prolific comics. See him on stages all over this region. Please give it up for Tim Wolf. Yeah, the Youngstown Comedy Festival thing is the saddest credit, I think, in the history of <laughs> entertainment. Well, that's nice. Um, Youngstown. I got, I got out of Youngstown, actually. Um, my mom did not. She still lives there. And, uh, yeah, it is sad because there's actually there's a convenience store near my mom's house that gets robbed so much that there's a sign on the door that says they're open every day from 10 a.m. till the robbery. <laughs> I got there once at like 8 p.m. and I was like, am I too late? He's like, no. He's like, no, you're good. I said, cool, open the fucking register. Stopped at a drive through on the way here. You guys ever go to a drive through and then when you get to the window and see the people that work there, you're like, this was a mistake. <laughs> like, they should have a picture of the people that work there on the menu so you can change your mind if you want. Wouldn't, it? wouldn't that be nice if you just pull up and be like, yeah, give me uh, not a goddamn thing. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with Daryl? Yeah, Daryl was the name that I chose for that one. <laughs> I did that joke at a show, and this guy came up to me all pissed afterwards. He was like, my name is Daryl. I work at McDonald's. I was like, well, what the fuck is wrong with you? You guys, anybody here ever get sleep paralysis? Isn't that scary? Like, sleep, I woke up the other day, and I couldn't move. And I was like fucking terrified. And I was talking to some comics after a show and they get sleep paralysis too. And I was like, man, sleep paralysis is the worst thing ever. And then this comic in a wheelchair came over. <laughs> and he was like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I was like, oh, I was just saying the sleep paralysis, not that bad. <laughs> Definitely better than awake paralysis. <laughs> oh man, my, uh, my ex-girlfriend left a dress in my closet when she left me. <laughs> and um, now my goal is, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like, I think you figured out where I'm going with it. I want to fit in that dress for my, for my Netflix special. I want to fit in that. I'm getting there. I just got to gain like 50 more pounds. But. I am getting there. I gained like four. I lived in Chicago for a little bit, and then I moved back here, and I gained like 40 pounds immediately. Because in Chicago, I was walking from like my job to my apartment, and now since I've been in Ohio, I've been uh, like driving from uh, like Arby's to Taco Bell, <laughs> and uh, my phone doesn't recognize my thumbprint unless there's Dorito dust on it. So <laughs> it's getting pretty bad. I went to Planet Fitness, like, so that's the one time a year that I go, and I was, like, leaving, and the dude at the, at the counter, he was like, see you tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, well, that's pretty presumptuous. The <laughs> only way you're going to see me tomorrow is if you also work at Wendy's. <laughs> I was like, is that, like, a psychological trick they teach you when you work at Planet Fitness? to keep you coming back? Is that like a thing where they're like, if you say see you tomorrow, they'll feel obligated to go back or some shit? 
because it worked, I went back the next day. I did, I was like, I want this guy down. He seemed like he really expected me to be here. Second day I was leaving, he was like, see you tomorrow, and I was like, fuck, I gotta come back again? I went back three years in a row, because he like, he like guilted me into it. Third day I was leaving, he goes, see you tomorrow, and I was like, look, I can't. I can't do it, dude, it's my girlfriend and I's anniversary, we got this whole day planned. We're gonna get some dinner and watch a movie. I'm gonna go down on her. She's gonna give me a dry hand job. It's just gonna be like an us night, you know? And he was like, see you tomorrow. So I just broke up with my girlfriend. <laughs> and I went to Planet Fitness the next day. And that motherfucker wasn't even working, so. He can burn in hell. Guy owes me a dry hand job. I just did a show at a drug and alcohol rehab place. Yeah, exactly. If you could, yeah, don't, don't do that. It's not a good, it's pretty sad. As soon as I got there, I was like, uh, I got heckled by somebody, which is a weird choice if a drug and alcohol rehab place to heckle. Some guy was like, you suck. And I was like, well, I'm here because I was asked to be here. And you're here because you're trying to get your son back. So after my set, I ran to my car and uh, tried to leave as soon as possible. But I couldn't back up because there was, it, was there was it was a white GMC Acadia that was blocking me in. And uh, I went in and I told the, um, the black dude that was hosting the show, I was like, hey, black dude that's hosting the show. That was actually his name. It was weird. <laughs> it was not his name. Um, but he, I was like, hey, can you go t up on stage and tell them there's a, there's a white GMC Acadia blocking me in and I have to leave? And he goes up on stage and he was high, which is funny because it was a drug and alcohol rehab show. <laughs> so he goes up on stage and he goes, hey, everybody, there's a white arcade in the parking lot. <laughs> Your next comedian. <laughs> and that was it. I was like, you didn't fucking say anything I just said, man. You told people there's a white arcade in the parking lot? Bunch of fucking racists going outside looking for Pac-Man and shit. So I called my dad, because he lived like right down the street, and I was like, can you come get me? Because there's this car blocking me and I can't leave. And he, my dad says, because there was an AA meeting going on, I was like, could be one of their cars, I don't know when that meeting ends. And my dad goes, well, why don't you just go into the meeting and ask him if it's one of their cars? I said, because that's fucking stupid, Dad. I'm not going to, I'm supposed to go into some guy's like tragic life story down there. He's like talking, like, I drank a bottle of Jack Daniels and I was backing out of my driveway and I didn't even see my daughter behind me until I felt the thud under the tires. And I just come in like, yeah, was that a white GMC Acadia? <laughs> You're lucky I turn around when I back up, unlike some people. I got, new, I got a job, uh, I work at a pet store. I don't want to say the name of the place, but it's like the Walmart of pet stores. It's PetSmart. Yeah. It's, pet, it's like Walmart, but there's less poop on the floor. You could shit on the floor of a PetSmart and get away with it. You guys know that? We'll just think it's a dog. Next time you're depressed, go take a shit on the floor of a Pet Smart and watch a grown man clean it up. It's very therapeutic. You could even point it out to him, just be like, I almost fucking stepped in that, dude. Once you do your goddamn job a little better, please. Where's your bathroom? I gotta wipe my ass. You could shit, I'm still talking about it, but you could shit on the floor of a Pet Smart and then slip on it and then sue them for like $100 million. <laughs> Take him to court, but like I was sitting there and running, it'll be cleaning up, and I slipped. 
PetSmart's like, we had a camera in that aisle, Your Honor, and you're like, oh, shit. And then the whole court watches you shit on the floor and then slip on it. And you're like, I'll show myself out, Your Honor. Then you slip on shit going out of the courtroom. And you're like, I don't know who did that, but I'm suing the court. Also, where's your bathroom? I'd wipe my ass. Somebody asked me for bull penis at the pet store. Not, in the, not outside this is venue. <laughs> That'd be weird. At the pet store. I guess dogs used to eat something called bull penis back in like the 1800s where this lady was from. And I was, <laughs> but they call them bully sticks now, but she came up to me. I had no idea what she was talking about. She was like, can you help me with bull penis? I was like, me, no, but... I can get another associate to assist you. <laughs> Marcus style three, Marcus style three. <laughs> One of the hard parts of working at the pet store is that I gotta like, people come in with like animal problems and I don't, I'm a cashier, I don't know what they're talking about. Like uh, this guy, like uh, somebody will come in and they'll tell me their animal died and if it's like a cat or a dog, I'll be like, that's sad. But somebody came up and they're like, my scorpion died. And I was like, good. <laughs> like, Let's go out and celebrate on me, shit. <laughs> now you can sleep without fear because there's no longer a scorpion in your fucking home. <laughs> Some guy was like, my tarantula died. And I was like, oh, so did my dad. But he only had two legs. I can't imagine what you're going through. So. <laughs> I got an STD test, and uh, I want to talk about that. <laughs> No, I went, I went, I went, and I, I wanted to get tested, and they're like, uh, we could test you for gonorrhea and chlamydia with the amount of money you have. <laughs> and I was like, what about HIV? And they're like, you throw us a few more dollars, and we'll do that test. So I threw them the money, they did the test. Well, they tried to do it, but they couldn't to get enough blood out of my finger for that test. So they're like, we're not going to be able to do that one, unfortunately. And I was like, well, what do we do then? And she goes, you're probably fine. <laughs> I was like, you're a doctor, right? And she was like, yeah, you're probably fine. I was like, all right, well, when I give the next girl HIV, I'll be like, that's crazy. The doctor vaguely assured me that I was fine. And she goes, well, unless you're a homosexual or an intravenous drug user, you're at a very low risk for contracting HIV. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? I was like, well, what if I went down on a girl while she was on her period? And she was like, ooh, AIDS! <laughs> she, no, she didn't say that. She was, I would have complained if that was to happen. I would have called up and been like, your doctor was very rude to me. Yeah, I'm the guy with AIDS. I'm very fucking mad. No, she's like, we'll do the test we can do, and if you don't hear from us, that's a good sign. And then a couple days later, I got a phone call. And now I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got to call every girl I've had sex with and tell her that she might have autism. <laughs> Luckily, I still remember all their phone numbers, but. <laughs> no, that's a joke. I was actually diagnosed with reverse ejaculation disorder. Yeah, and not a lot of people know about that because the guys that have it never come forward. <laughs> All right, you guys have been awesome. I wanted to do one more thing. Um, I saw on the news some guy said that he murdered his family because the radio told him to do it. 
the radio. And I was like, first of all, like, who the fuck listens to the radio anymore? <laughs> it's pretty suspicious. You could just listen to Spotify or you listen to Pandora and then thumbs down the demon shit. Just kill your whole family. I'd like to hear less like that, please. I just don't. Less of that and Maroon 5. But. Uh, no, but I was like, what station was it? I was like, is he, is he hearing satanic messages through like, I don't know, like old school Nelly songs or something? <laughs> you sit next to radio hearing, it's getting hot in here, so go kill all your kids. It is get too hot, you better chop their heads off. <laughs> Stop pacing, time wasting, cut up your kids and put them in the basement. What? I'm just kidding like Jason. Oh, how much you gonna do it? <laughs> just calls up 911 covered in blood. They're like, 911, it's emergency. Underlay, underlay, mama. Ia, ia. Uh oh. I butchered my wife. <laughs> Smile for me, daddy. What you looking at? You should kill your kids. I should kill my what? <laughs> you, you, your kids. You, you, your kids. Rob the jewelry store and then go kill all your kids. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>